We must understand clearly when we talk about capitalism, who are the capitalists? As if we understand that there are only a few people who own and control the means of production in the society, then we begin to understand that there are a few capitalists. And these capitalists exploit everybody because everybody works for them. Everybody sells their labor to them. It is by selling your labor to a capitalist that he's really able to exploit you. Instead of going through theories, let me give some direct example. Let's say that I'm a capitalist. And let's say that I, I sell shirts. I sell shirts. I sell shirts. I have a shirt factory. Let's say this is my factory. I own it. The machinery. I have a place where I get cotton. Now, I own it. I'm the capitalist. And let's say you are my workers. You are my workers. You don't know me. You never see me. You see my lackeys, you know, maybe my foreman, but you never see me. Now, let's say it costs me 50 cents for cotton for every shirt I make. And let's say it costs me 50 cents for upkeep of my machinery. That's a dollar. And let's suppose I pay you a dollar for every shirt you make. That means it costs me two dollars to get a shirt, labor included, your labor. I pay you for making the shirt. Now, when I sell the shirt, being a capitalist, and you must know something about capitalism, very important. The sole motivating force, the sole motivating force in a capitalist society is profit. Profit. That is the sole motivating force. Profit. Get money. Get it. Get it as fast as you can. Get it any way you can, but get it. Just get it. Just get it. And uh, even in, uh, you know, in the African community, this it affects us here in this country because Africans, those of us living in America, those of us born in America, we are imbued with the philosophy of capitalism and sometimes we don't even recognize it. Thus you find brothers and sisters even selling dope to their brothers and sisters to make money. Again, because we're imbued with the philosophy of get some money. Ain't nothing wrong to kill for money. Hell, your country is napalming for money. You can certainly kill for some money. All right, just get it. Just get it. It's the overall philosophy. When we talk about revolution, we must talk about changing values. We must talk about changing values, and we must understand these values. To the shirt factory. I've not forgotten. I'm just going to tie it in. I'll tie it in for you. I'll tie it in. You will see, it's, you must look under the shirt factory, too. You must look for spiraling economy. That's very important, spiraling economy. I sell the shirt for $5. I sell the shirt for $5. I don't do anything. You're the one who make the shirt. I'm exploiting your labor. You toil, you sweat, I get the fruit. That's right, I get it. But you grow it, you plant it by the sweat of your brow. I get it. I sell the shirt for $5. I am exploiting your labor. I really am exploiting your labor. I mean, even when you want a shirt, hey, you got to come to my store and buy the shirt for $5. Yeah, I really am exploiting you. Now. You're workers, you're in a factory, so you begin to get social consciousness. Yes, you do. Marx talks about this. Because you're working together, you see the socialized process, the socialized process, the laboring process, and you're able to see clearly how you're being exploited. So you get together, and you start talking about, we want more money. Well, you tell my foreman we want more money. So the foreman comes to see me. He says, the workers say they want more money. Later for them. Keep them working, man. So he comes back, no raise. So y'all work, but y'all get a little bit more agitated, you know, because it's scientific. The pressure rises, and as the pressure rises, the consciousness must rise. It's scientific. It can't be stopped. That's why revolution can't be stopped. Then you say, hey, look here. We're going to strike. So the foreman comes back and said, hey, they said they're going to strike. I said, oh, let them strike, man. And sure enough, y'all strike. Yeah, y'all strike on me. Now, when you strike, of course, my, my machinery stops. I ain't making no money. So after a while, I called my foreman. I said, what do they want? He says, well, they said they want a fifty more a shirt. They want 50 cents more a shirt. So I said, okay, let them have it. <clears throat> so I'll bring you back. You happy? I pay you fifty more. Right, so it now costs me $2.50 to make a shirt. It costs me $2.50 to make a shirt. Before, it cost me $2. I was selling it for $5. But hey, look here. I can't go out there and keep selling it for $5. Hey, how am I going to do that? I'm going to lose profit. And look here, since the sole motivating force in a capitalist system is profit, <laughs> ain't no need for me to come and sell it for five fifty. dollars hey, No. Next time you see that shirt on the market, it's going to cost you $7.50. Right. Right. 
And that's what's known as the spiraling economy. Because profit is what about wages go up into the demands of the workers and prices rocket. Wages go up, prices rocket. And it keeps going and going and going until it's got to blow the top. It's scientifically real. That's why Nixon is talking about freezing wages and freezing prices. He's stupid. You got to freeze capitalism, Nixon. Freeze capitalism. That's a problem. That's a problem. Yes, that's a problem. You must understand these concepts, because once you begin to understand them and master them, you will see the inevitability of revolution. Not only the inevitability of revolution, but you will see the inevitability of victory for the struggling masses around the world once you understand the scientific principles of revolution. Once you understand it. <laughs>